Welcome back class. My name is Dr. Scott Adamson. And if you didn't fall asleep during the last video, we uh, were able to determine that a Taylor series for the sine of X could be developed using all of this stuff that we did down here. The sine of X Taylor polynomial had these terms, which then we generated a infinite, an infinite Taylor series. The reason we did all of that is we wanted to have I wanted you to experience this ability to integrate the sine of x over x dx using Taylor series. There is no elementary function. There is nothing that you could find that you could take the derivative of and get sine x over x. So we're going to approach this problem using a Taylor approximation instead. So imagine, what if sine of x over x was a polynomial? Could you then find an antiderivative? Yes. Let's do it. So here we go. Let's integrate sine x over x. First of all, let's get a Taylor polynomial approximation for sine of x over x. We have one for sine of x. How do we get one for sine of x divided by x? Well, you pretty much do what it says. Take the sine of x, which is approximated by this polynomial, and divide it by x. So imagine dividing every term in this Taylor polynomial for sine of x by x, to get sine of x over x. x divided by x, one. If you divide this term by x, that x cubed becomes an x squared. If you divide this term by x, that x to the fifth becomes x to the fourth. If you divide this term by x, that x to the seventh becomes an x to the sixth. And that pattern continues forever, our infinite Taylor polynomial. Yeah, that's it. I'm not gonna do it in this video, but I encourage you to pause this video now and go over to Desmos and type in the function sine of x over x, see what it looks like. And then type in this polynomial, as many terms as you like, and see that that polynomial does indeed approximate sine of x over x. Now, let's express that as an infinite Taylor series. Let's express the sine of x over x polynomial as an infinite Taylor series. That is, let's say that it's equal to the sum of. Now look at these terms. So let's start counting at zero. You don't have to, you can start counting at one, but I'm gonna start counting at zero in this case. The zeroth term, the first term, the second term, the third term, etc. And let's start building our infinite Taylor series. Notice that each one of our terms has a coefficient. Here it's one. Now this one, you could think of as one over one factorial. It's still one. And then one over three factorial, one over five factorial, one over seven factorial. So it's always one over something factorial. What's the something? I like to start in the middle. When n is 2, it's a 5. When n is 3, it's a 7. When n is 1, it's a 3. So notice it's a double the value of n, 4, add 1, 5. Double 3, 6, add 1, 7. Double 1, add 1. Double 0, add 1. So it's double the value of n and add 1 factorial. Then it's x to the power of. Notice here it's x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth. Notice when n is one, there's a two, there's a power of two. Two is four, three is six. Notice that the exponent is just double n. Now that shouldn't be too surprising because we saw previously, before we divided everything by x, the power was the same uh, value as that denominator before the factorial, two n plus one. When we divided by x, we just had to remove one of those factors of x. So 2n plus 1, take away 1, is just the 2n. And then notice again, we have this plus minus plus minus going on. So we do need to do a, a negative 1 to a power. And this is why my preference is to have n equals 0. Because when n equals 0, when n equals 0, negative 1 to the 0 is positive 1. Everything's positive, good. When n is 1, negative 1 to the 1 is negative 1. Everything's negative. Good. When n is 2, negative 1 squared is positive 1. So everything's positive. Good. There you go. We now have a Taylor series from n equals 0 to infinity. We have an infinite Taylor series for sine x over x.
we can integrate. Because we have a polynomial for this, we can integrate a polynomial. Let's do it. So here's our polynomial. It started with just one. The antiderivative, the integral of one, is x, because the derivative of x is one. The antiderivative here, now let's kind of build this slowly. The antiderivative is going to involve x cubed. Remember, when we take a derivative, we decrease the power by one. So in the antiderivative, we're going to increase the power by one. Now, when you take the derivative, the three would come out front, and the three cannot be there. So we'll have to remove the three with a one-third. The three out front times a one-third will leave us the x squared. The coefficient of one over three factorial is still surviving, though. Likewise here. The derivative is x to the fourth. The antiderivative is going to be x to the fifth. In the derivative, the five out front, there's no five out front, so we'll have to remove it with a one-fifth factor. But the one over five factorial is still there. Likewise here, we have x to the sixth. So here, the antiderivative would be x to the seventh. A factor of one-seventh, so seven times one-seventh is one, but we still need the one over seven factorial. And this thing will continue plus, minus, plus, minus, dot, 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 forever and ever and ever. Don't forget your integration constant plus c. So what we could do now do is express this as an infinite Taylor series. So the antiderivative of sine x over x as an infinite Taylor series would look something like this. Now, to be consistent, let's start counting at zero. So notice what we have in each case is always a coefficient of one over, one over, one over. Even here, I'll get to that later, but it's even here gonna be a one over. It's gonna be a one over something. Notice it's a, when n is one, it's a three and a three, two, five and a five, three, it's seven and a seven. If you double the n and add one, double two, add one, double three, add one. Even here, if you double zero and add one, you could think of this as one over one and one over one factorial. So the coefficients on all of these things is gonna be one over the double the n plus one times double the n plus one factorial. That gets multiplied by x to a power, and notice the power matches the three, the three, the five, the five, the seven, the seven. So the power is gonna be the two n plus one. Notice we have to alternate plus minus plus minus plus minus again, so we'll have negative one to a power, and it is just gonna to be to the n, because for instance, let me start over here this time. When n equals three, negative one cubed is negative one, making everything negative as it should be. When n is two, negative one squared is positive one, making everything positive as it should be, etc. n goes from zero to infinity. And so now we have a way to express the integral of sine x over x as a Taylor polynomial. Now, we're gonna jump over to Desmos because I want you to see this more visually that this a way to integrate things that we previously couldn't integrate actually works graphically as well. Come over to Desmos with me. To help you visualize what we just built on the board, I'd like you to examine this Desmos graph. So first of all, in red, we're looking at that um, integral as a function. So the integral of sine t over t dt from 0 to x. So as we input values of x, we're going to output values of this integral. And so we see that in red. And notice that as x increases, the accumulated area under that sine t over t curve gets closer and closer and closer to pi over 2, 1.57-ish. But what we want to examine is, do we have an appropriate way to uh, write that antiderivative as a function using Taylor series, using the Taylor polynomial idea? And yes, we do. So in this cell, I've typed in the infinite Taylor series, 0 to, well, it's not really infinite on Desmos. It's going to go to A, and A is a slider that I'll allow to fix at whatever value I like. But I want you to get the idea again as A gets bigger, 
as I build more and more terms of this Taylor polynomial, this Taylor series, then it will um, approximate this integral uh, better and better and better. And so that's what we'll do. So notice here, there's the 1 over 2n plus 1, 2n plus 1 factorial, x to the power of that same 2n plus 1, and then the alternating plus minus plus minus the negative 1 to the n. So watch what happens as we build more and more terms. So when a is 1, let's turn it on. <laughs> when a is 1, there it is. And notice as a gets bigger and bigger and bigger, that Taylor series does indeed converge on top of that integral that we were talking about. And so it does indeed make sense that the integral of sine x over x can be approximated, can be represented, I should say, with that infinite Taylor series.